You want to support Roller March Unfiltered? Be sure to join our Bring the Funk fan club. Every dollar that you give to us supports our daily digital show. There's only one daily digital show out here that keeps it black and keep it real as Roller Martin Unfiltered. Support the Roller Martin Unfiltered daily digital show by going to rollermartinunfiltered.com. You can make this possible. The one and only debate between Vice President Mike Pence and Senator Kamala Harris took place last night in Utah, Salt Lake City, Utah. The University of Utah sparks certainly flew between both sides of the stage. A range of issues, including the coronavirus pandemic, climate change, the issue of race as well. Here is a roundup. And they knew what was happening and they didn't tell you. Can you imagine if you knew on January 28th, as opposed to March 13th, what they knew, what you might have done to prepare? They knew and they covered it up. The president said it was a hoax. They minimized the seriousness of it. The president said, you're on one side of his ledger. If you wear a mask, you're on the other side of his ledger if you don't. And in spite of all of that, today they still don't have a plan. They still don't have a plan. Well, Joe Biden does. And quite frankly, uh, when I look at their plan that talks about advancing testing, creating new PPE, developing a vaccine, um, it looks a little bit like plagiarism which is something Joe Biden knows a little bit about. Vice also President say, Pence, Vice President Pence, Pence, people deserve, you know, Susan, Vice the President American Pence, people deserve I didn't to know. Uh, that, Vice President that, Pence, I did not, uh, excuse me, Susan, the I did not create the know. rules for tonight. Joe Biden. You, you, your campaigns Trump, agreed to the rules for tonight's I, debate with I, the Commission on Presidential Debates. I'm here to enforce them, which involves moving from one topic to another, giving roughly equal time to both of you, right which ahead. is what I'm trying very hard to go do. Go right ahead. I mean, I thought we saw enough of it in last week's debate, but I think this is supposed to be a debate based on fact and truth. And the truth and the fact is Joe Biden has been very clear. He will not raise taxes on anybody who makes less than $400,000 a year. He said he's going to repeal the Trump tax cuts. Uh, Mr. Vice President, I'm speaking. Well, wait, wait. I'm speaking. With regard to the Supreme Court of the United States. Let me say, President Trump and I could not be more enthusiastic about the opportunity to see Judge Amy Coney Barrett become Justice Amy Coney Barrett. We hope she gets a fair hearing. And we particularly hope that we don't see the kind of attacks on her Christian faith that we saw before. Joe Biden and I are both people of faith. And it's insulting to suggest that we would knock anyone for their faith. There's the issue of choice, and I will always fight for a woman's right to make a decision about her own body. It should be her decision and not that of Donald Trump and, and the vice president, Michael Pence. I'll tell you, this, this, this presumption that you hear consistently uh, from Joe Biden and Kamala Harris that, uh, that America is systemically racist, mm. and that, as Joe Biden said, that he believes that law enforcement has an implicit bias against minorities is, is a great insult to the men and women who serve in law enforcement. I will not sit here and be lectured by the vice president on what it means to enforce the laws of our country. I am the only one on this stage who has personally prosecuted everything from child sexual assault to homicide. I'm the only one on this stage who has prosecuted the big banks for taking advantage of America's homeowners. I'm the only one on this stage who prosecuted for profit colleges for taking advantage of our veterans. And the reality of this is that we are talking about an election in 27 days, where last week the President of the United States took a debate stage in front of 70 million Americans and refused to condemn white supremacists. All right, let's talk about it. Eric Savage Wilson, host of Savage Politics Podcast. Dr. Greg Carr, chair of the Department of Afro-American Studies, Howard University, Reese Cobra, Black Women's Views. Reese, start with you. Uh, I take it uh, you were pleased with how uh, your candidate did last night? Absolutely. She was stellar, superb, brilliant, historic, magnificent, intelligent, commanding. I could go on and on and on, obviously. She just did such a spectacular job. She obviously had a very high bar that was set for her. And by every even objective measure, whether you look at the polling or you look at the fundraising numbers, she knocked it out of the park. And her opponent sat there with pink eye and a fly on his head, barely being able to breathe after a couple of words at a time, and lied, deflected, and pivoted the entire time. But what Kamala Harris did, Senator Kamala Harris did, was she did the number one thing she set out to do. Number one, she was there to amplify and, and, and boost 
uh, Joe Biden. And number two, she was there to eviscerate Donald Trump and prosecute the case against the Trump and Pence administration, which has been a complete failure. She was the only person who had a grasp on reality, not the alternate reality that Pence and, and Donald Trump like to portray. And she was very strong in terms of explaining that Moody's determined that the the, the Biden Harris administration would give would have seven million more jobs, that they would not raise taxes on anybody making less than four hundred thousand dollars a year, that they believe climate change is an existential threat, and that they will do something about it. They will not allow Putin to put Russian bounties on troops' heads. That they will do the opposite of what Trump and Pence have done, which is appoint monolithically white, young, male, unqualified judges. And it goes on, and especially I thought that she was incredibly strong on Breonna Taylor, which we're going to talk about later, and being unequivocal that not only did Breonna Taylor not not receive the justice that she deserved, but that they're going to do something to prevent this kinds of things that continues to happen, the implicit bias, the systemic racism in our criminal justice system. They're going to they're going to do something about it. Mike, Michael, Mike Pence has no plan. Donald Trump has no plan. They've been a disaster. And it was loud and clear that Kamala Harris and Joe Biden do, and more importantly, that Kamala Harris is ready to step in on day one as president, if need be, at whatever point that might need to be the, the situation. Erica. Absolutely. I totally agree with my sister, Reese. She laid it out plainly for the audience. And this was not a debate um, really to be had. This was about informing the American people what they can expect from a Biden-Harris administration. And particularly since we're in a very triggering environment where we have a person, the son of a Klansman, who is the executive leader at 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue that is going about the business of the day shooting infomercials, talking about how great he feels because he's hocked up on steroids, that we still have 200, over 211,000 people that are dead because of COVID-19. And there is still, as Reese has already shared, there's still not a plan in place to combat COVID. When you think about the EPA regulations that have been rolled back and the air pollution, the different people that have been placed in administrative positions that really are doing the very opposite of protecting the American people. So I think what people saw was uh, confidence. People saw um, a strong leader um, under the incredible pressures that our country is in. And I think what people saw, particularly for unregistered voters, because I just don't believe that they're undecided voters, that they actually have an administration um, quality leaders to um, register to vote for. Uh, I think uh, we had, uh, of course, post-debate analysis last night, Greg, with um, a group of black women. Uh, and I said this here, that last night, the job of Senator Kamala Harris was to do no harm. And that is after the first debate, you saw exactly what happened, where the polling numbers went up for Joe Biden because of how disastrous Donald Trump was. Of course, Mike Pence was going to be how he normally is, very calm, totally different demeanor and tone than Donald Trump. Doesn't mean you're not going to lie. But again, you come off differently. I do believe, Greg, that there were were several moments uh, last night uh, where where, uh, Senator Harris could have been a lot tougher on Mike Pence uh, and a lot more precise in going after them, uh, especially when he when he criticized her, when he said she had not lifted a finger on the first step act. I thought that was a moment where and I've been saying this here. I think Democrats. Let me be real clear. Democrats have been making a grave mistake by not talking about the role that they play in the first step act. Okay. Mm -hmm. If it wasn't for what her, Senator Cory Booker, Senator Dick Durbin, uh, any Republican Chuck Grassley did in the Senate, the bill would not have been improved. That's, I was sitting there going, please say, I'm tired of y'all taking credit for the work of Democrats. But mm-hmm. but she didn't. And he literally said, you didn't lift a finger. Then, uh, Greg, I also, when, when he said, when he criticized uh, over the uh, the Tim Scott bill, uh, and then mm-hmm. I was just hoping, I was like waiting for her saying, I'm sorry. Uh, I wanted to debate in the Senate Judiciary, but where were you on the anti-lynching bill? Where we, see, mm-hmm. it, it, because what he saw what he did, Greg, he went to her record because he was trying to talk to black men. When he criticized her record, it was all about black men. And then, and she didn't respond to it in terms of her, her attack on her record. That was a moment where I was like, yo, hit him back, hit him back. But I think they said, don't be angry, smile, do no harm. Your thoughts? I agree. In fact, everything that has been said so far, I think, uh, is is of a seamless whole. Uh, Reese laid out the substantive uh, 
case for Senator Harris's excellent performance last night. And Erica has uh, not only enhanced that case, but extended it in terms of what the objective was. And you and you as well. I mean, her number one objective is to do no harm. You know, as a person who laughs a lot, and who smiles a lot, I, I actually felt bad for Senator Harris last night because clearly the straitjacket that the Democratic Party put her in, uh, by the way, Democratic Party, um, a losing straitjacket. Uh, of civility, I understand she's under terrible constraints as a woman, as a black woman, and then have the Democratic Party that has never learned how to fight the white nationalist party uh, that seems to think they're engaged in a boxing match that they can win on points as opposed to coming into the ring with people who have slabs and and nunchucks and bare knuckled uh, brass knuckles, mm -hmm. and then they want to come and box and act like they can yeah. some there's some kind of referee that's going to give them a, an award on points. By the way, Susan Page, great job. Go sit next to Chris Wallace, particularly you coming out of the USA Today. Anybody who's been reading your byline for years know that you own Team mm. Pence. But at any rate, um, you know, I felt bad a little bit for Senator Harris because it took until that turning point in the clip that you played where she said, hold on, I will not be last year. At that point, I said, oh, maybe we're getting ready to see Kamala Harris. Because clearly what Biden and them have told you to do is go there and then her natural demeanor is to kind of smile, smile at Mike Pence who sat there, and again, I tell you, I love him, because uh, Smile Mike Pence is, is the worst kind of white nationalist, who sat there with mm. his uh, projectile stream of vomit lies. And by the way, those plexiglass shields were useless. But as far as, you know, you got 14 days to figure out whether Smile and Mike Pence has is, 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 is got COVID or not. And this thing can be projected up to 16 feet in the air. So those, that was just theater right there. Well, that first of all, the reason anybody. we know that, uh, Vice President Mike Pence canceled the trip with him and his wife to Indiana. Uh, and all of a sudden abruptly canceled that schedule and they've not cleared the schedule. It, no question, because I'm sure he's going to come out and say he has it. I mean, so, I mean, you know, so first of all, she put her life at risk and uh, and to sit there and to be under that projectile vomit of smiling Mike Pence, who is a liar to his DNA, even more yes. so than Donald Trump. Because see, smiling Mike Pence is a Christian nationalist. And a white Christian nationalist terrorist mm -hmm. like that think there's no place for women in any dialogue. You know, I mean, he calls his wife mother, right? So you know what that makes him. <laughs> but at any rate, right. the, the whole idea is that she had to sit there and try to be balanced. And when you're dealing with something like that in that straight jacket of, in, uh, of civility, you might lose sight, Democratic Party, of the point. The debate, Smiler Mike Pence is talking to his white nationalist base. And as you say, those black men who might be confused out there, Smiling Mike Pence needs to pick a few of you off enough to get this thing close enough to steal. See, that's what Smiling Mike Pence was doing. And the only honest broker who went out to Smiling Mike Pence last night was that damn fly. And if you want to know who was listening <laughs> to the conversation like we're having right now, understand that the victor of that debate last night, the one that everybody's talking about while we're actually talking about the substantive issues, are the people on social media tweeting pictures of a fly landing on his head. Uh, look, I think... Smiling we, like this, I, I, there ain't I, no I, debate. This I, is all entertainment. I think when we talk about, um, again, I, I look, we've seen Senator Kamala Harris questioning folks uh, on the yes. Senate Judiciary Committee, uh, and, the, and the reality is uh, there, there could have been a far more aggressive prosecution. But again, I think... And then, but, but here's what you also have, and we have to be straight up honest. You're still dealing with a nation where... Other industrialized nations have elected women leaders and not the United States. The Frank Luntz right. group of undecided voters when he was on the Fox News, oh, she was nasty, she was this. Because that, again, that's what happens. And, and look, I, I don't know what the hell Susan Page was doing, but, but I'm going to tell you right now, the way you stop somebody from over-talking you is not saying, thank you, Mr. Vice President. Thank you, Mr. Mm -hmm. Vice President. Thank you, No. Susan Page needs to go sit with a black woman for 24 hours to learn how to shut somebody down, to learn how to say, excuse me, you have gone over your time one too many times. That is it. And he just bulldozed her in this very nice, wonderful you know, calm way. And I was sitting and I was like, Reese, I was like, if this woman don't check his ass, but see, that's, but I'm gonna tell you what Reese, that's that DC bullshit. See, that's mm -hmm. that, that's that whole, you know, I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to sit uh -huh. here, you know, because what, what's the right gonna say? And no, yeah. you're the moderator. Right. Moderate. Yeah. I mean, I actually, 
think that she had great questions. I will give her that. But your job isn't just to sit there and ask questions. Your job is to control the pace, the timing, and make sure that it's fair and that people actually stay on topic, which she epically failed at. But at the end of the day, I mean, I think that the numbers speak for themselves. I mean, there was polling that came out. Nate Silver said that 69.3% of the poll of the people who watched the debate felt like Kamala Harris did a great job. That's practically 100%, because we know that 30% of this country is hopelessly Republican and a lost cause. Her job last night was not to beat Mike Pence. Her job was to beat Donald Trump. People are not voting for Mike Pence. People are voting for Donald Trump. And so I think that she was wise to, to pick and choose when she wanted to engage on, on Mike Pence. She gave him a gut punch with the whole auto bailout and pointing out that he did not, that he voted against that. Absolutely. But for the most part, she kept her focus on Donald Trump, which everybody is not, ha most people are not happy with. He has, his, his ratings are in the gutter. His favorabilities are in the gutter. Mm -hmm. And what I think Kamala Harris understood is that you have to win the the post debate game. A lot of times Kamala was excellent on the stage, but she lost the spin wars after, and she lost the pundits and things like that. Yep. Those are the people that are going to curate the clips that you mm -hmm. see on social media, the clips that go into the news things. And one of the biggest things that people focus on in these kind of debates is who's interrupting who. Who's going over on time and this, that, and the other. So I think that her strategy to stick within the rules, even though she obviously was gypped on time because Susan Page did a terrible job, she was much more succinct than Kamala is. And I love Kamala, but Kamala can be a little long-winded, but she was very succinct. She got very strong, memorable talking points where they're coming for you is one of them. I'm speaking is mm -hmm. another one of them. So her job is not to sit up there and assert herself as the biggest, baddest bitch that ever walked the, work, the world. Her job is there to bolster the, the, the Biden-Harris ticket and annihilate Donald Trump. Mike Pence is a non-factor. Absolutely. All right, well, here's the deal. So uh, we're going to talk a little bit more about the debate, but uh, I wanted to, I want to do this. Uh, well, first of all, we, uh, we got Greg back there. So let me do this here. Uh, it was uh, a bit ago, uh, uh, Joe Biden and uh, Senator Kamala Harris, they were actually uh, in uh, Arizona uh, where they were uh, kicking off uh, their bus tour. Uh, and so what I'm going to do for in a second, I'm going to pull that up. But, but one of the things that I think uh, that has to happen, and, and, and we're seeing we're seeing what's happening after this whole uh, debate, uh, Erica, uh, Greg, and, and Reese, in terms of how Donald Trump is just losing his damn mind, mm -hmm. saying um, uh, to Bill Barr, indict Joe Biden with 26 days left before the election. Uh, then you see, of course, uh, just how unhinged they are in every in, in every facet. This is the thing, Erica, that I am going to have to see from Democrats, and look. I know what Joe Biden is doing. I know his whole deal is unity, bringing the country together. But the reality is this here. The evil that these people have unleashed on this country yes. is going, has damaged us in a significant way. And I, and I will say this, if you are a Trump voter, you should pay holy hell for supporting what okay. this man is doing. And what we saw last night, again, uh, the nonsense coming out of Mike Pence's mouth uh, over and over and over again, I really hope that Joe Biden and Senator Kamala Harris, when they are in the White House, are going to be real to say, we are going to deal with all of these people, how they have destroyed this country, how they have lied about this country. There are folks who need to go to jail. There are folks who yeah. need to be uh, indicted. I mean, I can just go on and on and on here. That, I mean, again, what these people have done, Erica, is an abomination to democracy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. And I think that's why, you know, people repeatedly hear on this program from all of us and across the RMU family is that he is a demagogue. He's the son of a Klansman. This is the type of evil that we um, were expecting, particularly when he came down that uh, golden escalator back in 2015. And then when we think back to January in 2016, when he was still a candidate, said in Iowa that he could shoot um, a person on Fifth Avenue and people would still support him. I'm paraphrasing what he said. So now we speed up to here we are in October. And as you always say, Roland, please, everybody, don't pay attention to the poll. There's polling that's coming out that's showing that there's a wide gap 
in Florida, which always uh, usually goes Republican in Colorado and other uh, swing states and battleground states. But if we just think back to a four short years ago where we saw polling that showed Hillary Clinton being up and we saw favorable margins, some up by um, almost 7.1 um, seven, uh, points um, uh, ahead. So I think that particularly when we have five and a half million people who've already cast ballots, it is really eyes on the prize. It's heads down. Let mainstream media do what they do because they're going to continue to do that. They're going to continue to talk out of both sides of their mouth. They're going to continue to talk to these uh, supposed undecided voters. What we have to do as a collective is really make sure if you're still in a place where you can register to vote, that you're registered to vote. Make sure, as Dr. Carr says, put five on it. Make sure you have five other people that you're having these conversations with around ensuring that they're registered to vote and if they're not registering them to vote. And people get out and vote early, whether that's vote by mail or voting in person, because this particular regime wants nothing more than continue to, as you said, run this country in the ground, wants to isolate it from the globe. We're already seeing how the New England Journal of Medicine, which is an apolitical um, um, arm, that is saying, listen, you, we have a political incompetent people. And so we have got to get people that have a level of competency and that believe in science that are leading the American people. So they, the first 100 days, I agree with you, Roland, there definitely needs to be um, on that memo prosecution of people that have uh, caused harm, um, uh, people that have marched people right up into the grave. And really, we have to look forward that this is not just, you know, a, a, an election. We're talking about decades um, of repair that needs to be done. Um, what we uh, what we also, I think, witnessed last night, we witnessed... Uh, Greg, uh, in, in terms of uh, when you look at when you look at the issues, uh, when you look at uh, especially on law and order. I mean, what you heard was Mike Pence saying, "I don't give a damn about the rest of y'all out here, folks are being shot. We are going to stand with cops." Uh, he criticized Harris as well as Biden for the criticism of police, uh, and, and 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 again, uh, that was one of those th that was one of those things where I was hoping, I was just hoping she was going to say, "Do you even care about?" the victims of police brutality. Do you even care about that? And again, since Pence was trying to target black men, to me, that was a moment to also say, and you're the folks who refuse to even allow police consent decrees. You're the ones who are letting cops get off scot-free. You don't want to hold them accountable. And, and, and that's the piece. The reality is you have Trump, Pence, Republicans, who want to wrap themselves around cops. That's why all these police unions endorse them. That's why they support them, because these cops in this country do not want to be held accountable by anyone. All right, folks, back to that my uncle's video in just one moment. All right, the folks at Seek.com, black-owned company founded by Mary Spio. Uh, they, of course, a virtual reality company. You can check out their content at Seek.com, C-E-E-K.com. You can do so, of course, with these VR headsets. You can look at it, of course, on your regular device or your pad or your computer. But if you want to experience being in the room, you can use this headset right here. All you simply do is just pop in your cell phone in here, pop it on, and then uh, put this headset on, and you can literally experience their content in virtual reality. And so uh, allow for you to do a 360 degree view uh, of the room. But also, folks, uh, you, they have the 360 degree 4D headphones right here. Uh, these are, are Bluetooth headphones. Uh, they have complete surround sound in terms of as you hear the particular music. Uh, gamers love them as well when they're playing their games. Uh, and so it's just phenomenal, phenomenal bass in these headphones as well. You can get one or both devices at seek.com using this promo code RM. VIP 2020 RM VIP 2020. So we certainly thank the folks at seek.com for being a partner with us here at Roland Martin Unfiltered. All right.